Hey everybody, it's your old pal Chuck and I'm back with another review. And today we're taking a look at something very different than we've done previously. As you've gone through my history of videos, you know I've done G.I. Joe, I've done Transformers, I've done Soul of Chagokin, I've done Marvel Legends. But today we're taking a look at something that's, you know, kind of related to Transformers. This is made by a company called Action Toys and it is Machine Robo, Bike Robo. Let me explain. Long story short, uh, in 1983 or so, in the United States, we got a toy line called GoBots. Uh, GoBots was an import of a Japanese action figure line made by Bandai called Machine Robo. Um, in 1984, Transformers hit. GoBots really didn't catch on. Um, and in Japan, something somewhat similar was going on. By that point, Bandai had moved on from their Machine Robo line until they were approached by an animation studio company. Um, I, I want to say it's Sunrise, but I don't think that's accurate. I think it's somebody else, like Studio Nuho. Or, I, I apologize if I'm getting names wrong. But they wanted to do a show, and they kind of said, well, you have these figures in your Machine Robo line. So whatever history that Bandai created in 82 for their Machine Robo figures was wiped. Uh, the figures were reintroduced with this new uh, cartoon. Some fi new figures were created that we did eventually see in the GoBots line, while they also took figures from previous Bandai lines retooled, recolored them, and repurposed them for Machine Robo. The series was called Revenge of Kronos, and because it was aimed at an older audience, ended up doing a lot better in the ratings than the Transformers cartoon, actually beating Transformers in the ratings, and the Machine Robo Revenge of Kronos toys outsold Transformers. That's something that shouldn't be a bit of surprise if you know a little bit of your Transformers history, Transformers really didn't do well in Japan up until they started producing their own cartoons. Well, fast forward and Action Toys got the license from the animation studio to make figures based on Machine Robo. Um, let me repeat that. They got the license from the animation studio. What that means is they can make figures of the characters who appeared in in the Revenge of Kronos anime. For example, Bike Robo. They cannot do characters that were Machine Robo toys, but did not appear in Revenge of Kronos. For example, the GoBot as we know as Copter. I think he was in Machine Robo was like Heli Robo or something. Um, and keep in mind, some of the names were actually repurposed um, for example, I think Jet Robo was renamed Blue Jet. I might have that wrong. I'm not 100% sure. But long story short, that's how we have Bike Robo here. But as we know him in the United States, Psykill. And what's great, and what's great about the internet was learning about, when I first got on the internet, the history here, and the fact that the character we know, the toy we know is Psykill, and we know the character being a bad guy, was actually a heroic character in the Machine Robo cartoon. Um, and in fact, was a predominant character. Meanwhile, Leader One, a.k.a. Eagle Robo, wasn't that big of a deal. And that's why, as we'll see in robot mode, and on the original GoBot figure, he had a more human-looking, you know, kind-looking face. Okay, so let's get into the toy. This is... Psykill, but I'm going to call him Bike Robo. This is the color scheme you should look familiar. All the bells and whistles. It's that old Harley Davidson style, 1970s style uh, motorcycle. You know, with some futuristic elements. Now, there are some extra parts I do have added on. For example, there is an axe here that can store in a slot in the back, which I can now not get at. Oh, God. Oh, there we go. Uh... I don't know if he used this in the cartoon. I looked for footage. I could not find any. Um, it, it's very hard to find clips of the individual characters that are not named Rom Stoll from Revenge of Kronos. But 
Here it is. It's a nice looking axe. And the next thing that I'm not going to remove until we get into the transformation is the kickstand. Now, I removed the kickstand for transformation. I know other reviewers have different techniques. We'll get to that when we get into that part of the transformation with the legs. Also, another removable part are the handlebars. Don't worry. Don't, you know, don't get nervous that this is a big parts former. Yes, unfortunately, that was the style back in the day and, you know, in the Japanese figure lines, but there is a place for the handlebars. I don't know if it's intentional, but it's there. But again, we'll get into that in robot mode. Now, this is actually the first number. Well, it's the number one of the Machine Robo Kronos line from Action Toys. But this figure didn't uh, come out until much later on. The problem with the delay was the fact that Action Toys was not happy with how the tires came out. Those are actually real rubber tires. The bike can roll quite nicely with them. Uh, basically, they are pegged into the hands, but there's a separate uh free uh like a uh, axle that allows them to roll so it is nice that they did take the time to make sure this came out right and uh, so yeah that's really about it for bike mode um let's get into the transformation right now okay i've gone ahead and removed the kickstand um now for the transformation i guess the first thing we'll do is the legs uh, what you want to do is the legs do peg into the chest here. Um, go ahead and detach them and basically swing them out. This is sort of like the original uh, Psykill toy. You can come underneath and then you want to separate them. Uh, they do peg in. There's a peg right there that pegs into the side and then they the wheels do peg together. So you then go ahead and remove the wheel, just like on the original Psykill toy. Now, things get a little tricky here because you do need some space. So what I recommend doing is, uh, hmm, you want to go ahead and swing the leg out ever so slightly. There are plenty of joints there to do it, so you give yourself plenty of room. Uh, what you want to do is, you're now going to, that blue section right there, that's the foot. And there's a great little uh, tab right there that you can flick in with your nail that will bring the foot forward, get this bar out of the way, rotate it down, and then uh, rotate the foot forward. Uh, we're going to fiddle with the positioning, but you want to try to get that like uh, loop right there where the um, wheel was pegged in down as a little bit of an angle as a heel. But we'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, next, what you want to do is you want to come around. Uh, fold this section down and out, and there's a little tab right there. Now, when I got this figure out of the box, this section was already folded up. You actually want that folded down and to cover, and this will close off the leg section. Now, some reviewers have found that they can roll, fold, uh, rotate up the kickstand and fold it in nicely and will peg together in this leg section. I have heard from other reviewers, the same, I would say an equal number, that that ends up causing stress marks on the plastic here. The plastic in the leg is a little bit thin. It, at first, I felt it was a little fragile, but over time, I've gotten used to it. Also, you can store the hand, well, there is space to store the handlebars. Again, I've heard that it can stress the plastic. It, none of that is shown in the instructions. I would highly recommend not doing it because if you break the figure, you're kind of out of luck. And even though this was this has been out for over a year, uh, the prices aren't coming down. So with all that said, go ahead uh, and bring that section down. It will peg into place. Make sure you have the section here. There's a slot on that exhaust pipe and there's a tab there. And then go ahead and bring the leg back into place. We're going to repeat the steps here on this figure. And I am very grateful that they did put tabs in to help get that foot out. And just make sure to get that pipe out of the way so you can rotate the foot down. Just like so. Then turn it forward. Oh, popped off the ball joint. No bigs. Well, maybe it is. Uh, 
Uh, okay, I'm trying to... There we go. Okay, so get that down in position. You can, of course, we'll fool with that, you know, later on. But get that back down. Get that forward a little more. There we go. And then, again, fold out these panels just like so. That fills in the leg. Make sure you have everything lined up. Bring the leg down. Next, what you want to do is get your thumb right there in the crotch area. And you want to just go ahead and push the hips up. I actually missed this in the instructions. But if in case you do, the hips do pulled out naturally when you're transforming it. And what I just did there was the side panels I closed forward to complete the crotch and lower waist area. So now we'll just come up to the torso here. And the first thing you want to do is go ahead and remove the uh, handlebars. Use your nail, pull them out. They're a little bit softer, which is nice. Now, what you can do, and I haven't had any problems doing this, is as you can see, the peg there is the same size as the peg on the, uh, as the hole that the wheels went into. And you can actually slot them in down there and it forms what I think is a better looking foot. Let's do this on both sides. And there's no parts forming because this was going to be very discouraging that you were going to end up with like a lot of loose extra parts. And, uh, you know, we'll fiddle with everything, getting it all straightened out in a moment. Next, what you want to go ahead and do is come up to the top here, separate the arms, remove the other wheel, and then much like on the original Psych Hill uh, and Bike Robo figure, bring the arms out. There is a double hinge here that uh, basically brings the arms up into position. Uh, you can go right now, go ahead and rotate them at the forearm so the hands are facing up. Bring the chest down into place. Unfortunately, there is a little bit of a gap there. And then at the shoulder area, rotate the arms uh, down. And for some reason, that arm on mine squeaks. And that does make me a little nervous. Now, go ahead and take the wheels. I use the side that doesn't have the screw showing and just peg them into the arms there. I feel it goes a little bit easier. And, uh, yep, that's about it. We now have a bike robo in its robot mode, ready to go. Okay, so here's bike robo in its robot mode. I did go ahead and add the axe. Articulation is fairly nice. You do have uh, a couple ball joints in the shoulders with that swivel. Oh, one thing I do want to mention is I ended up rotating the wheels around. So the part with the screw actually pegs into the shoulders. I found that was holding a little bit better. Although in previous occasions, I found that the other way was holding better. But, you know, reviews, why should anything work easy? Um, you do have a rotation at the bicep, uh, single jointed elbows, a waist swivel. And unfortunately, a problematic uh, part here is you do have ball jointed hips, but then right underneath you have that thigh cut, and that does make lining the legs up going into bicycle, uh, motorcycle mode very difficult sometimes. And even when you have everything lined up and pegged, if you take a look at the back, the hips look a little out of sorts, and you can fix it with your hand and just rotate the parts then and there, but it does become a little bit annoying. Moving down, you do have ball jointed knees and you have some swiveling there, which kind of makes me question the need of the, that thigh swivel. And then you have the uh, ball jointed foot and that um, ankle uh, hinge area right there. So there is some nice articulation to this figure. And I have to say it is very good looking. The head looks a lot more like the uh how the figure the character looked in the cartoon and which is still not that bad you know as an aside let's not forget i think it was remco or something in the 1980s made gobot model kits that were transformable psycho was actually repurposed for a uh robotech transforming cyclone I think it was lancer's cyclone um they i think they just gave him like those uh, arm blades or something it's really kind of weird if you can find one. It's a little bit of a interesting piece of history because 
you know, ro you know, there is that history between Transformers and Robotech. But in that case, now you have Robotech connected to GoBots and Machine Robo. Just an interesting little aside I want to point out. Um, I do like the colors. There is some die cast here, especially in the torso. Gives the figure a little bit of heft. So, um, yeah, there's really not much else to say. We'll just pause, and I'll give you my final thoughts. When I first got uh, Bike Robo, um, and I was looking at reviews online, I was a little concerned with the figure because um, my previous experience was with Eagle Robo, and... You know, it came with actually two left arms. I had to replace the arm through Big Bad. And, you know, the transformation wasn't nearly as fun, which a lot of reviewers had said that it was not a strong figure. But, again, it was Leader 1, Eagle Robo, so I kind of had to have it. And a lot of reviewers had said that, like, with Bike Robo, there was some feelings of cheap plastic. And then I was hearing the stories of stress marks and breakage, especially in the areas around the legs. Well, I'm pleased to say with my figure, I've had none of those issues. Yes, some of the plastic in the leg does feel cheap. In fact, when I first took the figure out, um, I did I did have some feelings of this is not a solid figure. But once I transformed it a few times and spent some time with it, I really got to love it. I am concerned about the squeaking in that shoulder, so I don't see myself transforming it much more after this. Um, but... And like I said, I don't store the kickstand in the leg, but I do store the handlebars as part of the heels. Now, since this figure's release, I would say within the last few weeks of this recording, uh, Action Toys has released a deluxe version of Bike Robo that um, I guess you can say homages the classic Super Gobot or the deluxe Machine Robo. Uh, bike Robo toy from way back in the 1980s. There are darker blues, darker reds, um, and they really refined the transformation. A lot of the steps here are similar. They cleaned up the leg transformation. They did figure out a way to actually store the kickstand as the kickstand's not removable, the handlebars aren't removable, and the wheels uh, peg into the shoulder by the use of magnets. They also include interchangeable heads, including... Uh, three face plates that give you the Psykill look. While they don't include the axe, they do include interchangeable hands so you can get that classic Hanna-Barbera Gobot closed fist or some blaster hands. Needless to say, if you're on the fence about wanting a bike robo, you can eat there you have three options now. You have this figure right here, some third party versions that are retools, repaints of Rekgar, or that deluxe Robo, uh, bike Robo figure. In my opinion, if you have the money for either the third-party repaint of Rekgar or this, save an extra $50 and go for the deluxe version. Yes, it's about $119, which I think is uh, a little too much for what this uh, for what the figure is, but because it's a smaller company and it's a limited run, I don't see that price coming down. I only see it going up, and it's just a fantastic figure. I've seen at least two, maybe three reviews of it already, and every single reviewer has said it's a fantastic figure. But if you're looking for something a little bit smaller that fits on your shelf, this is a great figure. And it's a fantastic update to that classic uh, Psych Hill a Bike Robo character. So, this is your old pal Chuck. I do appreciate you watching. I know this was something a little bit different. Uh, for Bike Robo, we will see you next time.